Thank you, sure. Uh, th thanks, thanks to Peter, and good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for the introduction. And uh, indeed, I did try some very new things, you know, with Barracuda, and try to see how it will work for us better. And today, I'm going to talk about applica Barracuda applications in the oil and gas industry. And essentially, I'm going to talk about fr fr hydro hydraulic fracturing, you know, the, a very hot topic recently, and even to biomass conversion. Unfortunately, the biomass conversion part actually very similar to what Ravi was talking about a little bit. I was not able to pass the, um, the re reviewing process, so I'll skip it. But I'm, and the questions are welcome. You know, if you think of some questions you wanted to know, and the lots of the aspects are very similar to what Ravi has been talked about. But we dig into some more of the details, and uh, some of the issues are with the residence time. So our process is very diff It's also different. You know, it takes much longer. And uh, in that case, the speed of Barracuda becomes really important. Okay. So how to do? Okay. Okay. So this one, lawyers want us to put this up. So essentially, this is telling people that whatever I say today has nothing to do with the stock performance of tomorrow. <laughs> so so don't don't count on my word and bet on it. Okay, please. <laughs> Sorry, I can't show it for too long. <laughs> so, so endless, you know, everybody knows the in energy industry is going through um, unforeseen challenges, lots of changes, new energy, and, and, uh, and which just lots of these oil companies just trying to survive, you know, by the, due to the uh, uh, energy, oil cost the fluctuations, and lots of the thing, also lots of requirements, requests from the sh uh, stock shareholders. They want more green, especially for European companies. I don't know about Exxon Mobil or Chevron, <laughs> but for Shell, you know, that's lots of pressure. And so it will also try to, uh, you know, get into newer, uh, more carbon neutral technologies. And particle, particle laden flow in energy industry has, been, has very large in scale, just like in the refinery. Also, I, w I will talk a little bit about the oil sand operation. The Shell no longer has it. We uh, uh, unloaded it in, in 2017. So we are green, greener now. <laughs> we are not destroying the environment as much. And uh, so, uh, but unfortunately, lots of these are very large in scale. And the commercial scale computation or modeling is it's the only way you know, to get things out. And lots of those things cannot even be measured. And uh, also, that, and, and what we found is that uh, during this uh, uh, venture, the com conventional CFD, like the Euron granular models, they are very difficult to do, OK, because of the residence time requirements, computational cost is way high up there. And in order to do a, a more accurate a prediction using that type of model, it takes much longer and much more difficult to converge. And uh, so here, I, I scrapped the last part, the biomass part, but the, the biomass part essentially called IG square is a, is a world famous process uh, developed by T, uh, by uh, TRI, I'm sorry. The, the, the anyway. So the oil sand operation uh, is mainly in uh, 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 Alberta, Canada, and uh, the, it was related to uh, uh, erosion. So high concentration slurry. So since slurry means that the, the sand particles or solid particles transport transported in liquid, not gas. Okay. So I guess I'm the, uh, probably the first one to apply barracuda in a gas solid a liquid get liquid solid flows. And they also try to, try to study the impact of how the hot hot the essentially settling and the re entrainment of the particles. And that's related to the energy required to transport those sand particles in a very long pipeline. Usually it's like 24 inch in diameter and miles long, okay? And then uh, you have to go through uh, lots of this, um, uh, try to dissolve the, the, all the hydrocarbons out of it and try to um, uh, separate it and then you treat part of it. And that, during this process, you have lots of uh, erosion related. So you have to invent new type of materials and the study uh, where to outlay, outlay them uh, on top of the uh, existing carbon steel and try to minimize the cost and the, the uh, maintenance requirement. And that's the part. And then uh, hydraulic fracturing. So this, uh, this is another type of very uh, uh, popular application. Essentially, you are pumping uh, sand into the reservoirs and try to fracture the very tight, hard reservoir 
And this is very different from the conventional one. The mo the old, in the old days, you drew most, mostly uh, vertical wells, and then uh, try to, uh, and you just dig through the uh, uh, reservoir, and then the, the hydrocarbon just pops out. But nowadays, those reservoirs are very difficult to find. So the, the new technology developed is to combine with horizontal drilling. So you no longer drill in vertical, you also drill horizontally. And it's very long, it's, we're talking about thousands, thousand feet long. 10,000 feet long. And then uh, you vertically fracture those reservoirs uh, vertically. Okay, so you have a very long pipeline and then you fracture them vertically. So you create lots of different, uh, st different stages of perforations. And uh, you know, so, so during the meantime, of course, you have high concentration of solids, typically 15% to 20% of sand volume wise. And then uh, you have to know where the sands go, okay? So, so you, the, the, you, have, you know where the flow goes, but you don't necessarily know where the sand goes, okay? The more sand that go into a fracture, the more chance you have to recover more hydrocarbons out of it, okay? Okay, so oil sand, so, so, so this is a so-called dense slurry transport. It's always been difficult to, uh, to model. And that nowadays, some people are trying to use DEM, okay? Uh, discrete element math method with uh, a CFD. The problem is that it takes forever. So essentially accounting for every particle particle interactions. But uh, you know, MP, the, the Barracuda approach is the multi-phase PIC, I think everybody knows. So it's much faster, but uh, what happened is that, uh, so again, my boss, my manager wants me to say that we are no longer in the business. So this is, a, this is, a, uh, this is something we are no longer doing it. I just summarized my study here. And uh, the high content of solids presents a huge challenge in terms of operation and modeling. And the erosion and the entrainment are the main concerns. Entrainment, so see, you don't want the sand to settle. Once they're settled, it's causing all sorts of problems, like uh, uh, re uh, pre pressure fluctuation and uh, corrosion and other type of issues. And erosion is always there, you know, as long as you have solids in the, in the transportation pipeline, it, there's always uh, uh, erosion. And the, the, the problem is that there's no good models. You can, you can model this with Erarian granular model, but how do you model erosion? You, you really can't, okay? If you use DPM, it over predicts erosion by 100 times easily. No, no problem, so it may make it useless, okay? And, and then uh, once you enter the erosion regime, the, it, since the erosion is very difficult to measure, the one of the, the other problem is that how to measure it. So, so you know, there's a very famous institute called Stage one Research Institute. They, they, are, they specialize in this type of models. So they spent two years studying the erosion of this oil sand transportation and get two, four sets of data. Two years, get four sets. And two sets of the data are useless. <laughs> so only get two data points. Anyway, so we so she'll kind of do their own uh, uh, a consortium type of measurement. So we get some data and uh, mostly ultrasound measured and they try to get the, uh, how the uh, uh, pipeline pressure drop and the uh, uh, concentration of solids, et cetera. And as I said, granular Eulerian model is difficult to do, and you can really do a very effective uh, particle size distribution. And DM model, you know, it will carry you over the time just because of the cost of computation. And Barracuda somehow is a very unique combination, so that's where we pick it up. And the solid liquid interaction, again, this part needs some better interpretation. If you're using the default model, you just can't do it. So this is the first part of validation. So mainly the, con the main problem, the drag law is fine. Most of the time the drag law seems to work fine. It's the uh, uh, solid pressure. So how you uh, get the uh, 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 solid concentration in the pipeline correctly. So this is the horizontal pipe. And uh, we try to find out uh, where the, this, the, the, the dots here are data. So this is essentially the solid concentration inside the pipe. So solid concentration profile. So from the pipe bottom to the pipe top, okay? So this, the, the dots here are measurements and the solid line here are Barracuda uh, predictions. So essentially, you, once you get these uh, this terms right, this is the solid pressure, the solid pressure term coefficient. It essentially tells you how <coughs> particle and particle interact with each other, how they collide with each other. Okay, so these are the terms. So this took me a while, you know, but anyway, because back in, before version 14, it took forever, you know. So in order to get one, one case down, you know, it kind of wait until you get constipation, you know. It's, but after 15, you know, it's like day and night, <laughs> 10 to 20 times faster, easily, from 
from weeks, sometimes months, to like days, you know. It get, it's getting a lot better. And uh, so unfortunately, even with this model, you know, at, uh, the next one I'm going to talk about it, is that uh, we, we're trying to predict the entrainment velocity, essentially the settling of particle velocity. It can do it, okay, that's too, too difficult. So at one time I was talking with Peter O'Rourke and, the, and the Dale Snyder about how to implement this uh, re-entrainment model. But we didn't go, go that far, but we did, we did talk about it. So essentially just try to get the uh, larger dissimulation uh, a subgrid scale stress to see how they correlate to uh, particle pickup velocity. Anyway, so this is the thing I'm talking about. So, so there's a minimum in the same transport pipeline that uh, once you increase the velocity, you uh, pass below this one, you get a reverse trend to the pressure drop start to decrease. Once you pass that, you increase the velocity because all of a sudden now are transported, are fluidized. So you get a normal behavior. But below that, because the, the sand settles, you get a reverse behavior. Okay, but this one turns out to be impossible to do, so we gave up. Actually, we further go on with this, try to see what it takes to do this kind of modeling. Essentially, because of sand deposits at the pipe bottom. So this is the picture from the pipe bottom and in a, tran in a, in a, a transparent plexiglass uh, pipe. You can see that how these sand dunes transported inside the pipeline. And this is uh, a large eddy simulation plus uh, particles, DEM. So we are talking about 20 million cells with 20 million particles okay, in a very short pipe. Uh, uh, this is a two inch pipe and the L over D is like five. It takes four weeks for each simulation for a very small section of pipeline. And eventually this model was able to pick up the entrainment velocity, but you know, it's just too costly and uh, you know, essentially no better than doing experiments. And, uh, but it's, it's pretty impressive. So this is a joint project with Cornell University. And uh, we know it's, it can be done, but the cost is way out there. Okay, so we continue our saga with, uh, we assume just, we, we just have to assume that all the particles are, are, are entrained, essentially not settling, and that it can be easily done because those uh, correlations are well-known industry. Okay, so, and then that's what also the operation uh, locates, right? You usually don't want to, uh, you don't want to operate below the settling velocity, essentially, that's what it says. And this is the uh, uh, measurement. So this is the experiment measure. So first we validate our results in the lab and in the field, and share to see how the uh, same profiles are uh, picked up the experimental data. So the blue line is the CPFD uh, uh, Barracuda prediction, and the, the red line here is the experimental data. So essentially this again is the solid concentration uh, along the center line. So this is how they look like. And this is the flow loop we set up to do the, this kind of measurement <coughs> and using ultrasound, okay? So nothing uh, uh, wild, but the, the pipeline diameter is a little bit big. It's 7.625, and the, the loop is it's, uh, pretty long, okay? Uh, 20, 20 meters around in a loop. So essentially, this shows you that the data uh, can be modeled. Okay, in reasonably well. So once you get the profile right, you also get the pressure drop right. Okay, because you know we get the amount of solids hold up essentially solid hold up in the pipeline correctly. And and this is the one we try to predict as well. So we have lots of data, and most of them. So so what we found is that the Barracuda model predicts pretty pretty well. Essentially, linear profile in the the amount of erosion, essentially goes linear with the solid concentration. Okay, when it goes up, you also the erosion also goes up. By view to the default model using like fluent or others, it gives you really weird behavior. Okay, and uh, eventually we settle on this curve. Okay, so and this one actually a straight shot from Barracuda without any um, uh, fudging of the other parameters. It comes up really well. And these are just some predictions of the uh, solid concentration profile at different velocities and different, pa different particle sizes. And then uh, this is the, just show you the uh, profile. But the funny thing is that, <laughs> I sh I, so after, after we do this, then uh, uh, the beta version of uh, could I come. But unfortunately, we keep showing this thick uh, point here. We couldn't fully explain. So uh, it has something to do with the way, the new way they uh, tune the model to predict the, uh, to, to make it run faster, I think. Something to do with how uh, uh, the, uh, volumes of the solids occupies the computational cell. Okay, anyway, 
But so, so I have to accommodate this. So it eventually we develop a uh, erosion model for erosion granular model. So essentially based on the uh, local velocities. So there's, there's some tricks in it, but it also turns out very well. Okay, you can predict it essentially as long as the concentration is high, uh, or above uh, one to one one percent. So in, in, in the oil in the oil industry, the erosion is a huge problem. So it doesn't matter how you control the sand. So usually in the downhole in the reservoir area, you have a section of of area called a sand screen, maybe uh, uh, 30 feet long or 60 feet long, and essentially it's a it's a it's a screen try to control the particles goes into the pipe. So once it goes into the pipe, it creates all sorts of problems, especially erosion. And once you bury those pipelines in the ground or in the seabed, you expect it to run like 20 years. Okay? So any erosion is bad. And, uh, and you know, any time you send a, a remote controlled vehicle down, the, down to the ocean, we're talking about millions of dollars easily every time. Yep. <coughs> so yeah. So we'll continue on. So the conclusion is that the high concentration solid furrow model requires combination of speed and accuracy, okay, to do uh, for the uh, for the study pressure terms to satisfy the experimental data. Once that is done, uh, you can get the pressure drop and predict the, the operation operational parameters, and then uh, scale up results also <coughs> looks very well, and the erosion prediction are satisfactory, you know. Uh, Again, Barracuda 14, but in the new models, we put it into the Eurarian granular model. So again, we use Fluent, but anyway. It's, it, 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 where you, so it became a, so we, we learned lots of cases and make it into a, 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 a deep neural network model. So now people don't have to do anything, just click buttons on the internet web, on the web page and you get the results. The, the next one I'm going to talk about is the hydraulic fracturing. So it's a very, actually, in terms of the uh, modeling part, it's very similar. So it's just, once you get this, uh, uh, the, the solid liquid and solid solid interaction correct, then you can proceed uh, pretty quickly. So I mentioned earlier, this is the way they do it. So you have to, to find out where the uh, K zone is, and then you dig the horizontal, drill, ho horizontal well, and then you frack it and put, put in water, put, check out the pressure. Once the frack opens, you put in sand. To keep the to keep the the fracture from uh, you know sailing back, okay. Again, this is typically in the past was difficult to do. Almost no software can do it, and the, we were able to do Spiracuda. And this is the experiment we are doing because so again, there's multiple fractures, and you have to find out where the sands go, okay. So this is one of the things. So the more uniform you place the sand in the reservoir, the more hydrocarbons you can recover, okay. So there's money. There's there's money. And, the, and the, we use Barracuda for the purpose, so you can see the comparisons. So, so the, uh, the blue line is the ex uh, experiment data, the red is the uh, CF uh, Barracuda, and the blue one is, is uh, a Eurian granular model. Okay, so Barracuda is doing a much better job. And actually, for the last one here, what we found is that the experimentally, at the last sec section, is because you know you have, you have fluids leaving the a system, right? At the end, it's below the settling velocity. So actually, sense particles settles here. So if we count those numbers, it actually turns out pretty much closer uh, than the actual uh, experiment sees, okay? So essentially, equal flow rate uh, here, so that can be verified. And then the how do you, so even though the flow is, uh, is, is equally distributed, the solids is not, okay? Because you have much, the, the solids goes mostly to the first. So this is, this is a, a try to replicate uh, what, what is happening inside the reservoir with multiple fractures, okay? And then this is one of the typical applications, okay, in the pipeline. So each, each, the, dif the distance between these two, I shorten it, is 75 feet. So you have like one, one, two, three, four, five, six, six sections. So about 300, uh, 400 feet total in length. And then uh, that doesn't count this, the rest of it. Okay, and each hole has total number of 12, 12, hoverage, 12 holes here. So this is also another factor we can play with. So how many holes should be here? How many uh, uh, clusters, sections should we perforate to, get them, to maximize the sand distribution <coughs> or optimize? And these are some of the examples. So, so instead of uh, six or 12, you got three and four and five and six and see how the sand distribution looks like, okay? So this is, the, this is the flow distribution, okay, in the different fractures. And the red line is the solid distribution, the same particle distribution. So you can see that with uh, more, more, 
you can it, the, the variation changes. Okay, so I'm sorry, this is the, the variations we want to see here. So it looks like with more, it, it get more a little slightly more even out. Okay, five seems to be optimal. Okay. So this is a so we call it 4070. It's about 300 micron uh, in, in particle size. <laughs> And this shows you that with different number of uh, uh, perforation stages, uh, what kind of distribution you will get uh, from uh, the problems. So th we use this type of calculation to optimize our operation. And uh, this is the uh, our water flow fraction. Okay, so one is called water, or this the other one is called slick water. So in, in the industry, you can use uh, pure water. And usually, you want to reduce the drag. You put some kind of polymer called slick water to reduce the pressure drop, just to save on the pump, OK? OK, so, so we have uh, three cases compared. Uh, water with 12, uh, perf 12 perforation holes in each cluster, with and also slick water, and then slick water with six perforation. In each case, with also with three, four, five, and six clusters, stages. And then perforation hole size, the each hole is about only 3 eighths of an inch. And then for slick water, problems DP was corrected with a factor of 45. So the reason is that uh, we don't really know what's happening inside the reservoir. The, each reservoir, each cluster is a different pressure. So you have to correct that before you do the uh, modeling, because those are unknown boundaries. Okay? And uh, for slick water, so this is the first we did a, did a uh, usually that's why the, the industry usually started with slick, slick water. Okay, that's where we do our first uh, exp uh, uh, ver verification. Okay, and the wa water pumping rate is like 70, 75 barrels per minute. Okay, it's, it's uh, a, a, a 1,500, 1,500 uh, gallons per minute. Okay, and it's a two, uh, two point five pounds per gallon of sand, and uh, this the viscosity is about two centipoles. And so this is the comparison. So it shows that uh, uh, at four fra fractures, you know, it get the most even. Uh, solid concentration distribution. So a little bit higher in the, in the two and three, but you know, on average, it's almost flat. So this tells us, shows us that what kind, what kind of uh, perforation or procedure we should follow. And with six holes and 12 holes, so each cluster, you dig a different number of holes. And it shows that how the distribution looks like. So again, with more, less number of holes, it get a more even distribution. But this is give th th in the cost of pump pressure. So with smaller holes, you get higher pressure. Okay? So eventually, you will be able to get a very uh, uniform distribution of problem problems in the different stages. Okay? So these are the data on the measurement. And the, 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 the purple line is the experiment. It, what, so the, all these are data. All these are data. So essentially, and the, the blue line, is the model, uh, ver a mod eventually we tune the model and to get the average out of the data, okay? So, so once you do that, you, you, can, you can actually predict uh, what kind of uh, problems you will get in each hose. So this is one of case studies we do, we try to understand if you put polymers in it, does it enhance or reduce the, uh, 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 the change, the problem distribution? The things out there are almost identical. So this just get rid of one of the uncertainties. For example, and this is not a simulation I did with uh, Barracuda. So this is a very large fracture. We're talking about 12,000 feet, 1,200 feet, okay? And the width is only like a quarter inch or less. So th if you want to do this in uh, CFD, in a uh, uh, Eurasian cranial model, it's al almost impossible. There's just no way to do it. It takes like maybe like years. <laughs> you don't even get converged solution. But with uh, with Barracuda, uh, you know, in a few, in a, in a one or two weeks, you can get it. So this is uh, this uh, different, uh, different pumping rate. So this is 18.75 barrels per minute, and the bottom is 70, 10, 75 five barrels per minute with different type of sand. Okay, so one, 1.35, 2.65. Th so we we also experiment with what kind of particles we can pump in. Okay, so some of them design it with a gel uh, surrounding it or with uh, hair, or uh, with weird shapes, just to see how these different shapes of sand will stay in a, in a, in a fractured, uh, in a fracture, in a propped fractures. So you get, but the more you want it, uh, basically you want it to stay 
uh, near the in, in perforation hole. So these are the perforation holes. This, so it, the, the pipeline is going vertical to the, uh, to the slide, okay? And this is the tiny hole here. And then they, they, they got problems pumping into the fracture. So if you increase the sand, so this is the typical sand density, okay? Here, so you can see most of them is closer to the, uh, uh, to the uh, perforation hole. So it depends on how connected you want the perforation pipe or production pipe reconnected to the reservoir. So and then the different pumping rate, you also get different results. So essentially this become very useful to let the operator to let the operator know, you know, how to do the procedure. So the procedure procedure usually takes hours, four hours. And this also takes about a very long time, at least two and a half hours. So this we are talking about very large scale simulation. Okay. Okay, so the conclusion is that, you know, uh, we essentially basically uh, retune the model to get the liquid particle fluidization properly. And then uh, model optimization through published data, okay, and also experimental data. And there's some phenomena are proven difficult to model. And uh, again, we have to use very detailed uh, uh, large eddy simulation and the DNS correlations to get it. But, uh, we, so, you know, we know that's where we shouldn't go, okay, at least for the current state, state of the art. And large scale fracking pro uh, applications can be modeled as well, a factory with Barracuda. And GPU is a big help, okay, so essentially we cut the time from one to two weeks to one to two days. And thank you for your time. Thank you, Coach Chen. I, I told you he's exploring ways to use Barracuda for things that have not been modeled. And did I read that time r right? You simulated uh, an hour of real time for some of those uh, fracture two, models. Two and a half hours. Two and a half yeah. hours yeah. of real time. Yeah. So uh, don't try this at home. <laughs> <laughs> you can. Talk to him first. Um, no, and, and what I really appreciate is you're looking at uh, what can be done what can be done with calibration and what remains a challenge and then using that to make informed decisions on, on something that is really intractable by almost any other yep, means. Yeah. So, uh, Again, in the interest of time, we're going to have conversations with Coach Hen during the break. Is there one question that we would like to ask now? Ragu. Yes. Well, Jim, thank you very much. For but, but, I, but I have the microphone. <laughs> 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 now, Ray, you ask your question as soon as that mic gets up. <laughs> and then, Ray, when, uh, is yours one that you do one-on-one, -on -one or do you want to ask it afterwards? Well, Kuo Chen, I, I'm very happy to see you doing the work with liquid particle fluidization. Uh, I, Sam Clark and I had this conversation about 10 years ago. Okay, so I'm glad to see this uh, happening, and, and I would like to talk to you separately. But actually, this yeah. work started back from 2010, so <laughs> okay. yeah, almost 10 years ago. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, it's very interesting because there are so many other applications of uh, liquid particle uh, oh, yeah. processes anyway. So yep. Yep, uh, absolutely. very nice work. Thank you. Thank you. Ray, I'll let you ask during the break. Does that work? Thank you, Coach Ann. Let's thank, thank our speaker so one more time.